My name is Max Zuniga. And my name is Alex Soto. And this is WJGTV WJ with your weekly school news. news. Visions of MLK is an exhibition at the Linnet House to allow the community to showcase their talents and beliefs moving forward to Martin Luther King Jr.'s vision of unity. Lauren Sharif, talk to the curator, Montu Miller, to find out more. The Linden House Art Center put together an art exhibition to celebrate Martin Luther King and his achievements. This is the 11th annual, so I put it on every year. We started this event because it was always a a day of service in Athens, you know, it's a Monday that's usually MLK Day. Everybody gets together and kind of, you know, cleans out cemeteries, um, helps with the, uh, the elderly, they do all these events. So we wanted something to bring the talent in Athens together. Almost kind of give the talent something to do. Um, so I just brought, for years, been bringing poets, dance crews, uh, Hip hop and MCs, just bring them all together. So, this is the thing this year was time to do what's right. So, you kind of draw what the what you feel like the theme represented, you know. Um, in years past, we've done puppets, we've done um, where we we'll, we'll put up the uh, we'll put up the theme and how did you feel about the theme? So they'll write it out or we'll tell, give us a your quote on MLK. But so every year we have some kind of hands on activity and this year was this hands-on activity which turned out nice. Just seeing like the young kids drawings, I remember when I was that I was one of them. So we're like, let me sit down, get back to my roots a little bit. I feel like as a young black artist, people don't expect you to do things like this. Like for a community they just expect you just to do things for money. So I feel like when it'll show that every artist isn't the same and they're also Bring the community together. Athens is a city that comes together when it's time to come together, and it'll make future events like bigger and better. It's a beautiful thing, you know. That's one thing about you know Athens and some of the communities that celebrate um, MLK. Um, we we are his dream, you know. You know he has the famous speech, of course, that everybody knows. I had a dream, and I feel like. When we put this show on, when we do certain things, we are living his dream. We are his dream. It's, you know, we're making it reality. You know, Martin Luther King, he spoke about peace and all that. If some people who were just taking the punishment wasn't saying anything at all. So he spoke for a week. I felt like this well. All the artists, the poets, dancers, is what we did. He spoke for a week. It's important to celebrate MLK because he was, to me, one of the greatest orators in American history, as well as one of the greatest leaders. And so I hope, you know, hundreds of years from now, they'll still be talking about MLK. We, we have to preserve what he did. We have to preserve the, uh, the changes he made. I think everyone should be highlighted that actually have helped us on this road because we, we are here now, but we, we didn't do it alone. Like those people who actually paved the way, you know, blood, sweat, and tear to got here. So I hope it, it puts a seed in their head and, you know, it blossoms into something beautiful that lets them see way beyond color, way beyond race, gender, religion. I just hope that, you know, these events can plant that seed and continue to grow. Like the Griot said something at the event, he said, the time for straddling the fence is over. Like, you're either part of the solution or you're part of the problem. I mean, it's easy to sit back and, you know, there's some people who just only get involved once a year during MLK. You can't just get wrapped up in these events and once a year, twice a year, or during Black History Month, get trapped in that one moment. You know, um, there's, a, there's a saying that, you know, we've been saying for like the last year, you know, this is a movement, not a moment. The Battle of the Bands competition was a marvel to see as bands from the Athens area came to compete. 
the competition sponsored by the Cedar Shoals Journalism Program was to help raise funds for the program as well as to provide an event for rising teen musicians. Three weekends ago, the first Battle of the Bands was held in the 40 Watt in downtown Athens where seven teenage bands performed various covers and originals. Unexpectedly, the event received a large turnout including teachers, students, and other members of our community. but I was surprised at how many people came because I've been to like shows at the 40 watt before and have not seen a turnout like that so I was shocked by how many people were there but also it just made it a really lively and fun event having that much support at a school event. I enjoyed that I got to um, see a lot of new bands upcoming in Athens. It's nice seeing my friends doing something that they enjoy and um, I like seeing people's diff like passions. Yeah, it was really fun. The atmosphere was really energetic. Uh, the bands were actually a lot better than I expected for teenage bands. We've all played in similar places before, but this is the first time that all of us have gone together at one time to play a show. Though they didn't win first place, the Drapes seemed to be a school favorite while coming in second in the overall competition. Members Sacho Goody and Dominic Bialy look forward to performing more in the future as well as taking the music to the next level. My favorite band was the Drapes. The Drapes. I guess the Drapes. I enjoyed the songs that they played, their originals. So I like that. It was pretty cool because when I don't know, when you when you know them as friends, it just it makes it even uh just makes it a lot more fun uh, when you see them perform. It was somewhat of a disappointment, not really though, because it was honorable to even be in second place. That was still really cool. There are so many great bands there. It's always fun, uh, mainly just showing people who we know all the hard work that uh, we've done. We've had a lot of experiences before this show, so we played at the 40 Watt before, so we sort of knew what was going to go on. Yeah, we've also played uh, Nucci Space and the Shots. Right now we're working on releasing an um, EP album of four original songs, the four songs we played at Battle of the Bands. So uh, we're going to record those soon, hopefully, and have an album release and just trying to make moves, you know? Yeah, hopefully everything will be done by March and then we'll be able to get our name out there even more through the album and then we'll continue playing shows. Despite this being the first time Battle of the Bands has taken place in Athens, many people look forward to it becoming an annual event. Yeah, it would be really cool if there's another Battle of the Bands and um, to see more bands participate. Yeah, I think that would be really, really fun. I think it's it would be a great yearly event for our school. But if it's that big for the first one, like, I can only imagine it getting bigger. The Battle of the Bands is a great way to start off 2018 and will undoubtedly be a great way to start off future years as the event continues to grow. Countries Palestine and Israel have been in constant turmoil, fighting over land since the creation of Israel in 1948. The most fought over piece of land has been the holy city Jerusalem, which both countries claim as their capital. President Trump recently stated that the city Jerusalem should be recognized as the capital of Israel. It is time to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And also stated that he plans to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. The United Nations made a resolution in opposition to this, stating that any changes to the status of Jerusalem have no legal effect, are null and void, and must be rescinded. 128 countries, including many of the U.S.'s closest allies, supported the U.N. resolution, while only nine countries opposed it. We then gathered Palestinian and Israeli opinions on this issue. Hello, my name is Rahma, I am 15 years old, and I live in a small Palestinian village called Anyabud, right outside Ramallah. Hello, my name is Shaquille Ramosa, I am uh, currently in training in the Israel Defense Forces, I am a paratrooper in the combat unit. How does it make you feel that Trump has stated that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel? It makes me feel hopeless, because if they can take away our capital, our golden city, they can take away everything else we have 
so quickly and it's scary. It should belong to the rightful owners, the Palestinians that have been living there for centuries and have so many generations who have grown up there and have come to call it their home. We all know that Jerusalem is Israel's capital. We don't need the U.S. president, the U.S. government to, to state. Next, we asked for their opinions on Trump's decision to move the U.S. embassy to Jerusalem. No, because whether we like it or not, they have a huge influence on many other countries around the globe. And if they do this, other countries could follow in their footsteps. And like I said, it's just really scary that everything can be taken away from us like that. And I really hope it doesn't follow through. I disagree with the decision that Trump made. Of course, I agree that, Israel, that Jerusalem is Israel's capital, but with all the tension that's causing in the international community between Israel and countries that, like Saudi Arabia and Turkey, who are just starting to have relations with, now they're starting to cut it off, and the U.S. is just a mess. I full-heartedly hope that we can come to a peaceful solution extremely soon, because the longer this drags out, the more innocent lives are lost, and the worse it just gets and it's not a beautiful thing that's happening here it's not an amazing thing it's not a happy thing and i just hope it ends because ever since it started so many people have died for this cause and i just wish it would end and i wish that no one had to fear for their lives no matter who they are no matter what they believe in no matter where they come from and I genuinely hope that peace is on the horizon. Now to Scott Wells with sports. Swimming season has come to an end. We interviewed a varsity swimmer to see how the season went. Uh, the season could have gone better. There wasn't, after winter break, there was a uh, huge drop off in people that attended practice. We didn't do too great at the meets. A lot of people tried, but I mean, at the end of the day, we were just a smaller team than many other teams. So we were at a big disadvantage at a lot of the meets. I'd say endurance, because I spend most of my time lifting weights and I don't do a lot of cardio workouts. And swimming is a big uh, cardio, like cardio heavy, and exercise, so I think by attending practice, I increased my cardio health a lot. But it was very like a team heavy sport. Actually, no, I don't know. It was the other way around. It was more individual heavy. So even if your team wasn't that great, you know, as an individual, you could excel. But there were also relays, which were a team event. So if you wanted to be with a team and have that extra backup, then you could have that. It's like it's optional. It's not either or. Um, like I said, cardiovascular health, a lot of uh, breathing training. Uh, it uses like it utilizes full body, all your muscles. So it's it's much it's very good for exercise. I think in terms of getting more in shape, like we our coach got more on us for she got on us more often for not being late to practice. So people were attending more. She made us do exercise if we were late. So people wanted to the people that did come to practice. They were they made sure they were on time. Uh, after high school, it's just going to become strictly exercise. I don't think I'll be doing another swim team type of activity. Although I still appreciate what I learned during the sport, and I'll be using that to keep in shape as an adult. I won't be doing anything too competitive with it. Now over to Muhammad with wrestling. With the wrestling season coming to a conclusion, postseason hopes are high. You spoke with Coach Culliver about this season in the future. Um, the season has gone uh, very well for us this year. We're actually, um, our season, actually, regular season, regular season just ended this past uh, Saturday. This is our first year in quite some time where every wrestler finished with a, with a winning uh, record. Winning a wall loss record was on, on our side this year. So it was a really good year this year for us. Um, we have two wrestlers who are progressing to the sectional rounds, which is uh, Jamal Boyd and Ian Morton. Uh, they're both juniors and they've really. Um, they really met their expectation and they're actually exceeding them. I think both of them have a good chance to make it to the state tournament. Just our, uh, our mentality, uh, we practiced better. We took things more seriously. Uh, we, we were ready to meet competition this year. So I thought our guys were a lot more, I guess, dialed in or in the zone uh, this season, which got a lot better from last year.
Um, goals for next season is for um, everyone, to, everyone to return uh, from last year's rest, resting season, and also to have uh, more guys make it to the sectional round and hopefully to the state tournament. Again, my name is Max Zuniga. And my name is Alex Soto. And this, and this has, has been WJAG TV with your weekly school news. Who got the juice? Yeah. Who got the juice? Yeah. Knowledge is the tool. Meet me at the school. Yeah. Who got the juice? Yeah. Who got the juice? Yeah. Knowledge is the tool. Meet me at the school. Yeah. Who got the juice? Yeah. Who got the juice? Yeah. Knowledge is the tool.